<laughs> yeah, well, we, uh, we certainly, uh, certainly have a lot of interest, and it's a very fun time for one, and kind of slept for three or four days after the, you know, the World Series, and uh, kind of, I think he feels very, very good about, um, for a generational talent, or a centurion as I call him, he's uh, certainly the, you know, what's unusual about free agency is usually it's a, an economic uh, barrier for a lot of teams to sign players of that ilk. But in their models and how they view uh, players and is that it fits them because it's a great business investment. So apart from budgets and how they look at things, you can see that getting an opportunity to acquire a player at this age, with this skill, with this character, with this experience, with so much performance uh, gradient established that um, they understand the surplus value of it and, and also understand that maybe for most owners to own a team for 15 to 20 years, for that, for them to have an opportunity to acquire a player like this, I think they look at it. And I go through history and say, how many times have baseball offered this opportunity? And, and I think they all uh, smartly, you know, recognize it. And uh, so it, it's a lot of meetings and consideration and, and, uh, you know, these, you, you can really see that owners, general managers, that the, uh, they're, they're kind of called upon to be, you know, championship magicians. That's kind of what they're asked to do. It's hard to do, to put together the, that magic of a championship run. Do you expect the but behind every great magician, obviously, is the magic wand. I, I don't. I don't think Otani has much to do with Juan Soto at all. So I don't. It's not something we discuss or consider. And you know, he's Juan Soto is. You know, he's in an age category that separates him from all. So comparability is not when you do these things for these young players. Comparability is not done with other players. Um, the one thing that I'm really happy about, um, because Juan's played in World Series, uh, he's known the championship moments. I mean, other than the Dodgers and Astro players, for, I think Juan is, he's got the most bats in the postseason, so he's been seen and understood, I think much more so than A-Rod was when he was a a young player and obviously playing in in New York City and in the platform of New York um, his character uh, working with you know the the biggest media markets everything about Juan Soto was pretty well known and so for a free agent at this age you don't really have the the opportunity to examine him being around great players, being in big markets, being in championship situations, all those things have been, it's like every box is checked where with A-Rod, he wasn't in those, uh, was, didn't quite have the resume of championship play, big city play, all of those things that, that Juan has. How much do you think Soto enjoyed playing in New York and how will that factor into whether he goes to either side of town? I think that that uh, playing in New York for Juan was really, really comfortable. Um, he really, really enjoyed his teammates, the Yankee experience. Juan loves winning. You know, the reason Juan Soto got to New York was because Juan, in, with Washington, and due to Peter Seidler's illness. Juan Soto wants ownership that he knows is going to support an opportunity to win annually. And he has, it's remarkable to think of a player from a very modest beginning 
you know, from the Dominican Republic that all the monetary offerings that he's received, record offers consistently, that his focus was always was, I want to know who my owner is, I want to know that we're going to be able to win, and I want to know that besides me, there's going to be a great number of uh, support on the part of the owner that he has the same desire to win that I do and that I'm going to commit my career to it and I want the owner to commit his resources to it and that's really why Juan Soto became a free agent. When you say Hunter. he brings billions to the franchise and everybody knows, what, air, what are the revenue streams that you're considering? Well, I, I think the fact that when you have a, an, a, something that no one else has in the player community, in the talent arena. You have the jewel, you have the, the Mona Lisa of the museum, you have the attraction, uh, you also have somebody that allows for owners to win repeatedly. And when owners win repeatedly, their revenues skyrocket. Uh, they develop the impact of postseason play on attendance, on uh, rights and in the streaming world, what those rights may mean, all of those things are going to generate that. Plus the international branding of being the uh, you know one of the one of the greats, and yet he has literally 15 me years more of his prime to offer. So, Scott, Scott you see, uh, Juan's uh, free agency wrapping up on the earlier side, or do you expect this to, to go into January or February? Well, due to the volume of interest and Juan's desire to hear, I can't put a time frame on it, but it's going to be a very thorough process for him because he, he wants to meet people personally, he wants to talk with them, and he wants to hear from them. Scott, in Anaheim, when the Yankees were out there, you used Centurion to describe uh, Soto to some of us. Can you just go through your definition of this? I'm sure. Well, when you think about the top 100 players of the game, you have to say that you can sit down and go through. Um, you know, we have a about a 60-page media book on one, and you talk about who he is in comparison to the greatest players in history at his age. And when you look at all that information, which is available for purchase, at, no, no. <laughs> uh, when you look at all of that information, you will see that he is in a very, very select group of two or three, sometimes four players in history. And some of our greatest, greatest players, Mays, Aaron, Wims, you start boiling it through. He ellipses many of the great, of the performances of many of the great young players that we have in our game, the Griffies, the A-Rods, the, the uh, you know, all of them, the Tomies, and, and you start looking at what he's done and what he's accumulated in his performance at this age, it's, it's remarkable. Well, I've got a list of attributes you mentioned that Juan is looking for in the team that he signs with. How would the, the Toronto Blue Jays really help on that scale? What have you seen in their odds to that? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about specific teams. I can just say that this is about owner commitment. It's about illustrating to Juan Soto that his objectives are going to be met about wanting to win and win consistently because that's what makes the game fun for him and motivates him. Does Soto want to meet with every owner I mean, that he's interested in face-to-face? -face? Um, yes, I think there's going to be definitely, um, as they desire to, the owners want to meet with one and sit down and talk with him about what they're going to provide for their franchise short term, long term. So most definitely, yes. Where do you see this market in relation to the Mets? Well, I think, again, it's where Juan is open to. He said it when he... Well, not just Juan, but yeah. broad base. Well, I, I think the Mets are obviously trying to uh, get to their goal, which is winning a world championship. And I think they've been very clear about pursuing this aggressively in the market.